Hello and welcome to Where You Live. I'm your host for today, Michelle Rule, and I'm really pleased to be here with Linda Digby, the Executive Director from the Kelowna Museum Society. Hi, Linda. How are you today? Wonderful. Thank Happy you to be here. Great. So we're going to talk a little about, about Canada 150 and what that means for the museum and for our community. Do you want to tell us some of the things that are going to be going on this year? Well, so much is going on this year, Michelle. The, the mission of the Kelowna Museum Society is to, to illustrate and celebrate the cultures histories and possibilities of the region. And that's what Canada 150, the sesquicentennial, is about to the museum sector. And so we really have embraced it. What we do every day really is Canada 150. But this year, uh, we're, we're doing some special things in addition to that. For example, we have a special exhibition in our flagship museum, the Okanagan Heritage Museum, called Quiet Stories from Canadian Places. That, that sounds fascinating. It is. It's a beautiful piece of work by artist Heather Klein out of Regina. And she's really interested in narrative art. How do we use art and story to, 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 to create a message? And so she was here, actually, and she was in Kelowna last year during Culture Days. And she interviewed a lot of people, including Mayor Bazran, including Tan Wong, including some of our community old timers and passers by as well, and collecting what are their impressions of Kelowna? What does it mean to live here? Because what we're interested in our sector this year is what are those 150 untold stories that are about what makes your community what it is and what makes Canada what it is? Wow, that sounds like a great exhibit. Now, would families be interested in that? Is that a, a good thing for kids as well as adults? Tell me a little bit more. Well, I, th I think kids will, will enjoy the, finding places that they recognize in the exhibition because there are some Kelowna scenes in there and, and, and listening to the voices that are in the audio recordings that go with that. I think the, that the children and, uh, and, and people of all ages, because I know I, for me, I've got my own inner eight-year-old <laughs> who is still alive and well, I think most of us do, uh, exploring the changes of the permanent gallery. As a sesquicentennial project, we are changing the entire permanent gallery of Kelowna's First Purpose Museum, which opened 50 years ago as Kelowna Centennial Museum. And over the years, it got added to, and the name changed it. Now it's known as the Okanagan Heritage Museum. And, uh, and, and so we thought, in, in, in the centennial, we built a museum. In the sesquicentennial, we reimagine it. And so we're, we're changing the entire gallery. We're making it more a place to explore and to learn those unexpected stories about place. For example, I'll bet, I'll bet a lot of people don't know what the first language of contact here in the Okanagan was. Do you know? I can make a guess, but I think we'll just let you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> it was French. Yes. It was French. And, uh, and now we don't hear a lot of French. There, there is a strong Francophone culture. There are a lot of Francophones here. But we, people don't think of Kelowna in that way. Right. And yet it's so. And so that's one of the unexpected stories. And there's many others. That sounds really great. Now, you have some special programming um, going on for specifically for families. Can you tell me a bit about that? Certainly. We are really uh, pleased to be offering some family drop-in programs that every week explore a different topic of local history and what and, and local place. And uh, so what's fun about these programs is they're designed for adults and children to enjoy together. So I know a lot of people uh, wonder, oh gosh, I've got some time with my children or my grandchildren or my visiting friends and relatives. What's something we can do together that all ages will enjoy? And so these programs are really good for that. They're an experience designed to be enjoyed by people of all ages going through an activity together and creating memories and, and, and learning and having fun together. Wow, well that will be a lot of fun, and especially for people that have family coming from out of town. I know in the summertime people get their grandchildren coming and, you know, and other family members, so they'll be able to come down to the museum and really make those memories together. We would love that. I think you know that the Sesquicentennial Canada 150 is a wonderful time to, for Canadians all over the country to visit their local museum. You know, sometimes there isn't a sense of urgency around going to your museum, it's always there. But during Canada 150, it's like, oh, I should do something for Sesquicentennial. What's something I can do with the kids? Going to the museum is a really easy one, no matter where you live in Canada. That's a really good, a really good activity to do this year. Great. Now, I also heard that there's going to be some special tours. Ah, 
Okay, word is getting out <laughs> because they're kind of a secret. Well, Ooh. they're going, well, they're they're about secrets. They're not a secret anymore. Not a secret anymore. <laughs> that's, I guess that's good news. Yes, starting uh, for July and August, uh, we're going to be uh, running some some really fun uh, walking tours leading from the Okanagan Heritage Museum through the downtown waterfront cultural district area. And what we're looking at is what are those surprising stories? Some of the secrets of early Kelowna, things that maybe you haven't thought about before. Maybe some things will be a little shocking. Some things might be a little funny uh, and uh, we're, we're very very excited to be uh, spreading the word through the grapevine of, of, of early Kelowna. <laughs> so secret 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 tours that are now the, not, so not secret. secret. Yeah, the, the not secret <laughs> tour of secrets, right. That's now it. If people, you nailed it. If people want to, f to find out more about those, um, I'm, I'm assuming there might be some kind of pre-registration or you know, do they need to do that or do they just phone in or do Actually, they just show you up? Actually, you know, you just show up and that's part of the beauty of it. I know uh, certainly in my household it's sometimes hard to plan very much in advance and when you've got friends and relatives visiting it's even harder. So you can just show up and uh, and so we really love it when people keep uh, an eye on our, our website or on Facebook because there's so much going on it's, it's, it's hard to, to, to keep up. So checking what are the details about this week's program for example. Facebook and the website are a really good place for that. Great. And what's your website address? Colonamuseums.com Oh, easy, easy. easier. That's yeah, great. Yeah, that's right. You know, one thing I really have enjoyed about your museum over the last few years is the relationship with the West Bank First Nations. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? That is a relationship that is so important to us, and we we uh, value it so deeply. And in, in fact, when we first started three years ago, reimagining what the gallery changes might look like, the first partner who we invited to come and imagine with us. Was, a, was Jordan Koble of the Centuweeps Heritage Museum in West Bank First Nation. You know, what stories do you want to see here? What, what would you like to see? And so imagining together, uh, going through decision making together, going through projects together, and so something that, that, that we, a, a dream we share with Jordan is that we understand as we go through the museum, our local First Nations aren't in this, just in this little corner here. They're, they're still, of course they're still here. And so we want to illustrate in that the museum that you know how the experience of First Nations, our First Nations neighbors, right through every chapter and through all of our topics, what's their perspective? So we actually ha uh, are just getting to the end of a shared video project with uh, St. Sweeps Heritage Museum uh, with support from Central Okanagan Foundation to present some local indigenous knowledge video series that'll be available throughout both of our museums. And it's like a partnership between St. Sweeps Heritage Museum from West Bank First Nation and Okanagan Heritage Museum, kind of a bridge across the lake. And, uh, and, uh, and, and those will be available in both of our museums and online. Wow, oh I love that, and I love that metaphor of the bridge across the lake. I think that's fantastic, and, and especially in this sesquicentennial, you say it much, it slides <laughs> off your tongue much better than mine, um, you know, but I think in this, especially in this year that we honor and respect the, our First Nations heritage. Well, it's so, top of mind, yeah. and in our sector, the heritage sector, there's something we've been thinking about for, for many years, but, but especially with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, you know, it really reminds us there are people who have been here thousands of years with a really rich civilization and we need to tell the story differently and and uh, this is their place we are we are we are visitors in their traditional territory and 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 we take that very deeply into our hearts and our thoughts as we as we reimagine how we tell a different story the centennial we thought about history in a particular way maybe in the sesquicentennial as a museum sector maybe we're thinking about history from a different perspective. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Linda. I've really appreciated having you here today. And again, um, www.colonamuseums.ca for people to get more information and really enjoy and take part in the museum this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Hello and welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Michelle Rule, and I'm your host for today and I'm very pleased to have Betty from the Kelowna Community Concert Association here with me today. Hi Betty, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Can you tell us a little bit about the Kelowna Community Concert Association? It's a very old association in Kelowna. It's been going for about 60 years. Wow. And um, the, it's run by volunteers. We're all volunteers. And the idea is that we will put on five live concerts a year at the Kelowna Community Theatre. And uh, we bring music from away 
from Europe or the United States or Canada, any place, we find interesting concerts. We have a cross mixture of genres. So we will have classical, brass, vocal, dance, um, jazz, just a mixture every year. So you never know what you're going to get. Well, you do when you get a subscription, <laughs> but it's always different. We try to make it very interesting for people and bring in huge talent. For sure, and I know I've seen some of the names over the years, and I've wished that I could go, but I wasn't a member. So I understand there might be a few memberships now that are opening so people can, can yes. become involved with yes, your association. Right. We have 900 members usually, wow. and we have 20 memberships that are still available if people are interested. And they can uh, reach us at uh, an email or a phone call, whichever they prefer. Okay, and what's that email address? The email is community underscore concerts at shaw.ca. Great, wow, that's great. Now this year you're doing something a little bit different for the sesquicentennial. Yes, for the first time we thought we would help, help celebrate Canada's 150th birthday by giving a free concert to the community. So we have a group, we have the iconic Canadian group coming in, the Canadian Brass. Oh. <laughs> and we're going to have them perform at the island stage. And we're actually collaborating with Festivals Kelowna. And it's an interesting collaboration, the first for us. And for the first time we applied for a grant. And uh, the city awarded us with a grant to help pay for the venue at, uh, at um, the island stage. So it's going to be on the evening of October, August, sorry, the 23rd. It's a Wednesday night. It's the night that Festivals Kelowna always puts on something at the island stage. And so we're going to be there. And we're also going to be there greeting people and telling them a little bit more about our association. We don't advertise. We find our members mostly by word of mouth. And you have to know somebody to find out when we're opening up our subscriptions, I guess. <laughs> right. And so I've just told you. <laughs> right. And now everybody that's watching will know, so I'm sure those will fill up fast. But they don't need a subscription to come to Canadian Brass no. at the Island Stage no, this summer? No, that one is totally free. Great. So now before the Brass plays, they start at 7 we're going to have the Neville Bowman trio come in. Oh, great. And they're going to open for the brass. And so we're going to have some local music as well as music from away. And that's different for us, too. Right. It's that's, all memory yeah. building, though. You know, when you have people come to hear a live concert, I think they remember it better. I think that there's just something that builds a memory, and they can say, oh, we heard the Canadian brass, you know. Right, and you see other people that you know, so there's some community to the, the event as well. It's much nicer than maybe just sitting in your living room, right. watching it on TV or listening to it on the radio. Um, and, you, and, you get to yeah. meet people, talk to people, and being outside, I think, is very special as well. Oh, I think so, and on the lake and that view behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, what could be better? But also, at that time, we often have guests from out of town. So here's a chance to, because we can't always have, allow people, I try to. If you have company in town, I try to make sure that I can get a ticket for you. Uh, but this way, they can bring, you can bring all your relatives. Right. And kids can come, you know, any age group. And they're so talented. This group is just amazing. They're virtuosos. You know, they're really classical brass players. But they're so used to engaging the audience. They, it's just something they do so well. And they're funny. And Chuck, who's played the horn for forever, does this thing where he slides across on his back on the <laughs> stage. And they're funny and they're very talented and so entertaining. I think it's just going to be a fabulous concert. Well, I'm really excited. I've seen them perform live a couple of times now, and I definitely would recommend to anybody that's in town on that night, August 23rd, to come down to the island stage and see the Canadian Brass live and in action. I'm, I'm afraid they're not going to play my favorite song. Do you know what my favorite song is by them? 
Rudolph the Nose. <laughs> Red, really? And it's Did a Christmas song, right? Yeah, so we probably yeah. won't oh, hear that in do August, that. No. but that's okay. I think no. I'm going to enjoy the concert nonetheless. So yeah. I look well, forward to seeing you there that night and, well, um, and so, a lot yeah. of other friends. Right. And it's going to be kind of a range of music. It'll be classical, but it's also going to be well-known pieces. It's going to be toe-tapping, you know, so people can go home humming. I'm sure there'll be some songs you know, even if it isn't Rudolph. Uh, I'm sure there will be. <laughs> well, Betty, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Well, and, thank you for um, having me. Hearing about the Kelowna Community Concert Association, it's been fascinating. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello and welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Michelle Rule, your host for today. I'm really pleased to be here with Joshua Denoye from the Kelowna Art Gallery. Joshua, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So I understand there's some great things happening at the Art Gallery this year for our sesquicentennial. Can you tell me a little bit about the Canada Day celebrations? We have some great celebrations planned for Canada Day. Um, I just want to point out that it's an important milestone for us as well. 2017 marks the 40th anniversary of the Kelowna Art Gallery. Wow, great, yeah, 40 years. It's terrific, so we've got a number of special things planned, um, and like you mentioned, on Canada Day, we've got all kinds of hands-on art activities, exhibitions, uh, something for every age group, all members of the family to check out. So one of the signature things we have going on is that we're going to be bringing in 150 big, sturdy cardboard boxes, and we're gonna have a whole ton of paint and we're gonna let everyone's creativity run loose and they can paint their visions and their celebration of Canada on all of these cardboard boxes. And we'll make a giant sculptural piece out of it <laughs> afterwards and leave it on view for the community to check out. Wow, that is so exciting. So children should maybe wear a smock. <laughs> 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 might, might be good. And, uh, and yeah. you said it's free, but I think you want people to bring donations for yeah. the food bank? We, it's at that time of year where people aren't necessarily thinking about uh, the food uh, and people's yeah. plates. People are hungry um, all times of the year. So we're going to be accepting donations on behalf of our friends at the Community Food Bank. Uh, so we'd encourage anyone stopping by to please bring one. Uh, and it will we'll fill up those boxes with that. That's excellent. Now, if people want to paint a box, should they pre-register with you? Yes, there's a, this has been, uh, the painting activity on Canada Day has been a really popular one. So one of the reasons that we've got 150 boxes is so more people can take part. Uh, we do encourage them to please register in advance by calling the gallery. Um, can I pass on the number? Yes, please. Yeah, it's 250-762-2226. Six. Okay, that's great. I'm sure you'll be getting lots of calls for that. So yeah, that's we, great. We have a whole lot of different activities in addition to that. So if you're just in the area and you want to drop by, we have uh, chalk art on the sidewalks. We have um, painting on plein air. So we'll have the easels set out in the grassy area just outside of the gallery at 1315 Water Street. So families can get active there. Um, the weather's going to be amazing, but Absolutely. if it <laughs> isn't, the whole gallery will be open. So all four exhibitions will be on view, and we'll have lots of hands-on art activities inside of the gallery space as well. Oh, that's great. Now, I understand you're opening a new exhibition on Canada Day in the main gallery. This is really exciting. Let's hear about it. It is. It is. It's, it's so great that we're able to open it on July 1st as well. Uh, the exhibition is called A Legacy of Canadian Art from Kelowna Collections. So it's a really unique exhibition. In the five years I've been with the gallery, we've never had anything quite like this. So we have a guest curator, Roger Boulet, uh, who has reached out to private collectors and private collections in the Kelowna area and built a whole exhibition out of work. So these are, these are works of art that are in people's homes right now, but they're behind closed doors so the public doesn't generally see them. Wow, that is amazing. So what, who are we going to see? Whose art are we going to see? Like, exactly, that's what's exciting. Yeah. Uh, so, so you'll see works by the Group of Seven. So this is going to include historical Canadian works like by A.Y. Jackson, Lauren Harris, Emily Carr. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Daphne Ojig, Alex Janvier. Um, I mean, the list of 
artists that are included in the exhibition is very impressive. Um, so there'll be over 80 works in our largest exhibition space. Um, and like I said, it's really exciting to see this be opened, open the doors to the public to come and check this works out. So, yeah. so that's a real treat on Canada Day. It's the first day that we open that exhibition, so it's free and open to the public, but the exhibition will actually run until October 15th. Great. So there'll be opportunities for friends and family to come and check it out as well. Oh, that will be wonderful. And then you'll be running your family Sundays sometimes as well, uh, so people can Sundays. come down and, and do that throughout the year. It sounds really, really exciting. I, I cannot believe that people are agreeing to let you show their private art from their own homes. That is so generous. Yeah. Um, it really shows the spirit of the people of Kelowna, I think. Yeah. And I guess I should point out that um, it's called a legacy of Canadian art and how it ties into 150 years of Canada is that it's really looking uh, through a historical lens at Canadian art. So it's sharing 150 years of visual art in Canada and it's it's interesting because you're seeing that through the lens of a local collector as well so it really ties it right back to the Kelowna. Um, there's also a couple other dates I'd love to to share with you yes, and the viewers. Um, we have an opening reception which uh, happens on Saturday July 15th from 1 to 3 p.m. so there's there's an opportunity to come and celebrate with us in the gallery and then also on Saturday August 19th there's a tour and tea and talk <laughs> <laughs> with the guest curator. So if you want to find out a little bit more about what, how Ro Roger Boulet pulled this exhibition together and, and perhaps some of the historical Im importance of why certain works were chosen, um, that's a great opportunity to get an intimate view of it. Wow, well that's fantastic. So if people want to know more, they can check out your website, and if you could share that with us, that would be great. Absolutely, yeah. Our website, kelownaartgallery.com, um, is a great resource for everything. You mentioned Family Sundays, those are always happening. So we have all kinds of different programming. Um, I just highlighted one exhibition, but we have four exhibition spaces. So right. there's some fantastic other things to see as well. Oh, well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for coming today and sharing this information. I'm really excited to come down to the Art Gallery on Canada Day, maybe get a little paint on a box, and uh, but especially to see the opening of this exciting exhibition for great. the Canada Sesquicentennial. I got it right. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Joshua. Thanks, Michelle.